What is the basic cause of anger and fear? That is the question I hope to answer today in today's podcast. The actual cause of anger and fear is not a single thing. Rather, it is a combination of factors, including perceived threats, stress, frustration, and past experiences. Perceived threats can trigger a fight or flight response, leading to feelings of anger. For example, if someone feels that their personal space is being invaded or their authority is being challenged, they may experience anger as a result. Stress and frustration can also contribute to feelings of anger. When individuals feel overwhelmed or unable to achieve their goals, they may become frustrated, leading to feelings of anger. Past experiences can also play a role in the development of anger. For example, individuals who have experienced traumatic events or childhood abuse may have an increased tendency to experience anger in response to perceived threats. The actual cause of anger is complex and multifaceted and may involve a combination of biological, psychological, and environmental factors. Understanding the root causes of anger can help individuals to better manage their emotions and reduce their likelihood of experiencing anger in the future. Now, it is important to note that anger and fear are not the same. We humans have five basic emotions. Anger, sadness, happiness, fear, and disgust. These emotions can be seen in all human cultures and certain subhuman species. For example, dogs have been known to experience disgust if you use the wrong cleaning chemicals in your home. Or if you pet them the wrong way, or sometimes if, you see cert if they see certain types of other dogs. You'll be able to tell when your dog is disgusted by watching their body language and responses to their surroundings. The cause or reason we have emotions is to alert us to situations in our surroundings that require us to take action. Emotions are in it. That means that it's genetic. It's in our genes. We have had them since we were living in caves. The instincts of humans are not always the same as all animals. We have emotions to help us survive as a species. Uh, for example, you can see anger in an infant whose needs are not being met. The infant's anger cry gets a response from mom. As the infant continues to develop and learns to crawl, a, a fear of strangers develops to protect the infant from a situation that might indeed kill it. Okay, so what, what causes all of uh, these emotions? Our, our senses, that's the eyes, nose, mouth, and skin, are constantly scanning our surroundings for possible threats. When we sense a possible threat, a fast track signal is sent to the amygdala in our brain. This is done totally outside of our awareness. The job of the amygdala is to prepare us to react and either fight the threat, flee from it, or freeze in place. The amygdala is the fight or flight response part of our brain. At the same time, a slower message goes to the cerebral cortex, that's the thinking part of the brain, which allows us to assess the nature of the threat and choose how we want to respond to it. Each emotion communicates to us how we perceive the threat. Conversely, the emotion of gladness is an exception. The message of glad or happy is that we perceive a situation that interests us and which we want to pursue. It's not really part of the amygdala. The message of anger is that we perceive a threat that we can eliminate if we throw enough power at it. This is what this is why the adrenaline gets going. Our vision focuses on the threat and we are ready to attack. The message of fear is that you perceive a threat that will possibly kill you unless you get away from it. Okay. I want to think uh, ex talk about an example, a really good example about um, the amygdala, the fight or flight response part of the brain. Think of the amygdala as like a chihuahua. Have you ever seen a chihuahua? It, it's it's kind of a little shaky, it's a little nervous, and it just barks at everything. 
The thing about the Chihuahua is it will bark at actual threats and it will also bark at things that are not actual threats, uh, perceived threats. It just barks at everything. I think the interesting thing about the Chihuahua is it probably has no control over its own amygdala. And it's just nervous that everything's a threat. It, it, again, it, um, it doesn't matter if it's just an, an actual threat or a perceived threat. Everything's bad. And sends it into fight or flight mode. That's why, you know, Chihuahua will get nervous and then it'll come up and want to, like, bark at you or run away. I think uh, the human amygdala is very much like a little chihuahua. Uh, it's, uh, it's this part of the brain and it, it gets excited. It goes into fight or flight mode and starts reacting. And you, you say things you later regret before the uh, message gets to the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of the brain saying, hey, 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 this is not really a threat. Uh, basic example is maybe uh, you are, someone is going to, is robbing you and you have to decide it uh, and you're afraid because it's an actual threat. They could hurt you, they could kill you. And you have to decide, am I gonna fight or flee? That's what uh, the amygdala is doing. Now, another example of when the amygdala might get excited is if someone like on social media says something really just mean or just really nasty about you and it makes you, you feel threatened, you're, you're angry and you, you, you respond impulsively. You say something and then you're like, whoa, I shouldn't have said that and you, you know, delete it later. Um, that would be an example of where you're not actually in danger. You're not in physical danger. No one's going to kill you. You know, it's just social media and someone getting a reaction out of you and it triggered your amygdala. So you, you know, you want to attack back and you want to say something, uh, but it's not a actual threat. So, but that, so think of it. It's like the little barking chihuahua in your brain. You know, everything's a threat and sends you into fight or flight mode. What, I strongly recommend you do is when you're in a stressful situation, pause and ask your, I know, and I know it's hard, it's especially in those split seconds, but you, you have to decide, is this an actual threat or is it a perceived threat? If it's an actual threat, then you need to react appropriately. If, if it's, um, Maybe a small squirrel runs up and starts biting your, your shoe. You know, okay, it, it's nothing to run away from. You just kind of go into attack mode, just kind of kick it away, no big deal. And you go on, proceed on your way. But if it's uh, a lion, well, you know, you're not, you're no match for a lion, so you would want to run away. So that, that would be an example where the uh, human amygdala is doing its job of helping you decide, should I go into fight mode or flight mode? Fight or flee. Now, uh, conversely, there are instances when there is no actual threat. It's a perceived threat. Uh, an example might be um, someone at work is just openly challenging your authority in front of everybody. Are, are, is your physical safety at issue? No, not really. But you want to respond to this perceived threat. So you might, you know, say something negative that you'll regret later, or you might just cow, you know, run away. Um, but we agree it's not an actual like threat to your physical safety. But that, again, that's also where the barking chihuahua comes in because it sees everything as a threat and might you might end up reacting before you have an opportunity to stop think about the situation and that, that's when the prefrontal cortex comes in and that's like the brakes of the brain it says hey 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 let's, let's not proceed i think the best advice i could possibly give in this situation is if you know you're going into a stressful situation remind yourself Nothing is a threat. That way, whenever something happens, you don't automatically like knee jerk react to it 
in fight or flight mode, you because you told yourself in advance, hey, nothing is a threat today. Don't worry about it. That way, when something does happen, the amygdala doesn't go into fight or flight mode. And then you end up saying or doing something that you're really going to regret later. Now, if it's an actual threat, like a, a tiger jumps in front of you, then yeah, absolutely. Don't worry about my advice when I said nothing is a threat because, well, that buddy is a threat. So let me, let me recap. The purpose of this audio is to help explain and find the basic cause of what is our anger and fear. I believe we can trace it back to, and you know, this doesn't all apply to everybody because everyone's different. Everyone's unique and everyone's had different experiences. Some people have been through trauma and some have not. Some react just differently. But as a general rule, subject to exceptions, I would say that the amygdala, which is the fight or flight response part of the brain, is responsible for much of our anger and fear. I, I really like the uh, Chihuahua example because the Chihuahua, you know, is this little nervous, shaky animal that that thinks everything's a threat and it just barks at everything, actual threats and perceived threats. And the human amygdala, in my opinion, is very much like a little barking Chihuahua because we see things that might be a threat or see things that aren't an actual threat, but we perceive it as one and we get excited and it's up to the prefrontal cortex to put, you know, the brakes on the brain and tell us, Hey, stop, slow down. Let's think about this. So best way to shut down the bark and chihuahua is I would say mindfulness, be aware of your surroundings and remind yourself that everything is not a threat. That way, when something stressful does happen, you'll, you'll have that extra two or three seconds to think about the situation and react in a more logical and not so emotional way. Anyways, I hope this helps. I, left, I hope I left you with something good. Uh, thank you for listening. Please consider subscribing.